for our finished machine, we require the use of sensors. So I'm going to show you how we can create these. We're also going to use them to trigger operations, which are like events and sequences. Here's our part. And at the moment, if I just hit play, we've got a transport surface, rigid body, and obviously a collision body. I've also created something here called an object sink. And all this actually does is it takes this block out of the simulation when it hits that surface. Now, what the actual aim for this is, I want this pusher arm to be triggered and push our block into this box. In order to do that, I need a sensor. So I'm going to go in and create a collision sensor. I'm going to pick this body. We can define this by various different shapes. So this could be a box, a sphere. I'm just going to use a simple line. If I go OK and I now hit play, I could actually send this collision sensor to our runtime inspector. And we can see here that it's actually being triggered when it comes into contact with our box. If I now stop this, in our navigator, we can see that we've actually got our sliding joint. So this is what we saw in the previous video. And I'm now going to choose an operation. I'm going to select my position control. Now, at the moment, my position control is set to zero. So that's both on distance and also the speed in which it's going to move. So when I hit play, it's not doing anything. The operation is going to tell it to remain at zero, but I'm going to select the collision sensor. I'm going to say when this is triggered equals false, it's going to remain at zero. So again, if I just hit OK now and I hit play, we shouldn't see anything happen. I now need a secondary operation on my same position control. And I'm going to set my position at 500 millimetres and a speed of something like 100 millimetres per second. And I'm going to say, this is going to be triggered when our collision sensor triggered equals true. If I now go OK again and hit play, we're seeing that linear sliding joint come into effect when our sensor is triggered. We can see that our value here, the speed is too slow. So as this is being triggered, it's coming out. As soon as this goes past the sensor, this is returning to its zero position. Very, very quick and easy for me to set that. I can go straight back into my operation. I can now change the speed of this, and I want to choose something like 500 millimeters per second. Now when I hit play, we're getting the effect we wanted. And again, it's been very quick and very easy for me to validate that and know the values that I actually need in order for this to work. I'm now going to create a signal. And I'm going to connect this to my collision sensor. The parameter name is triggered. So in other words, it's going to send a signal to tell me whether this is triggered or not. It's an output, and it's basically true or false. I'm going to go OK. I'm going to hit play, and in my navigator look, we can see we've got a signal, which again, we could send to see whether it's being triggered or not. If I now go to signal mapping, we can now see the signals within MCD, and also any external signals. In the next video, you're going to see John show you how these can be mapped, and how this can now integrate with the PLC.